G'day guys and welcome back to today's episode. Now, before we get going, last week we talked to Chris Scarrett from the Cleveland Agency in London about how he navigated the pandemic with his business and how he embraced sales and a mindset of extreme ownership. So if you haven't yet watched that episode, flick back and listen or watch that. Um, now, in today's episode, we're in part two of this conversation and we're going to talk about the mindset change that Chris has undergone moving from a freelancer mindset to becoming a business operator and how he navigated that change. And I think you're going to find this really helpful because he's going to help you understand how letting go of production elements has helped him grow. But more importantly, he shares the truth about how long these things take. In Chris's case, he's transitioned from freelancer to business owner in about 12 months. But he also talks in detail about how he's built some lifelong friendships in the VBA and a really important story about niching his business and how that led to him being headhunted by Andrew Lloyd Webber's team and, and specifically their director of sales and marketing. Uh, Chris is a lovely, lovely fella. I love speaking to him. He's a great contributor inside the VBA and you'll never meet a more positive human being. So I know you're going to really enjoy this. Well, Christopher, it's lovely to have you um, guest on the YouTube channel and podcast. Um, now, tell me a bit about that journey to go from Chris the freelancer with a company name, sort of pretending to be a company, mm -hmm. but really it was just Chris the freelancer, to where you are now where you genuinely have a team and, and a website and, um, you know, how, how does that feel? Tell me about that journey. It's, it's great. It's really great. And what it what it's showing me is that you need to, you know, you have to take that leap of faith. And once you start to take leaps of faith, and a few of them work, it's great. And you will, you have to take a leap of faith, and sometimes it will fail. And that's fine. And I think, you know, the Amazon example is fail fast, you know, get it wrong quickly, so you can move on. But I think this comes back to mindset a lot. You know, it's like you think of yourself as an individual operator, you will be an individual operator. If you think of yourself as a business owner, you don't have to make that your outward, you know, shop front. You don't, you know, it's Chris is a, is a business owner, but I'm also a filmmaker and my clients know me as a filmmaker, but you have to change your mind. You have to change your mindset from me, freelance Chris to business owner with a team. And that takes a while. And I, you know, I don't think anyone or very rarely will you go from freelance to you know huge business in a month. It will take time. And it it's not taken a huge amount of time, but it's just that combination of mindset change um, in terms of who I am as a business operator, mindset change in embracing sales, because you can only grow a business, you said at the start, if you're doing 200,000 pounds a year, next year 200,000 pounds that's that's backwards you have to grow you have to grow um and and putting a structure on how you will change is really important so to go from here as freelancer to here as business owner you could just go well I'm just going to increase sales and that's one way of doing it but you have to manage that and you have to have data behind that and I'm not talking you know we're not talking tons of data it's like what are your monthly sales goals how are you going to achieve them and are you going to reflect on whether you've done well or not? And introducing slowly over time, smaller pieces of business understanding and management into what you do, which you probably couldn't do if you're on your own. And you probably don't need to do if you're on your own, because it's like you win a job, you do a job, you deliver a job, and then you go back through that process. And so your revenue is, you know, that classic up there, not there. Whereas what happens here is, you find that instead of going from this, you're kind of, you're slowing, you're shallowing the curve. And the time that you get back from not editing, for example, you can spend understanding your business and developing your business. And that's kind of, I think that's where, and I'm certainly not at, at nowhere near at the end of this journey. Absolutely not, you know. And every time, like Paul Weller said, I think in, in one of his songs, the more I know, uh, the, the more I learn, the less I know, or the more I understand, the less I know. And it's so true because every, every time something works, you go, great, I'm keeping that. But then that goes, oh, so we can turn, you know, it's like the old adventure games, you know, turn left or turn right. Where are we going to go with this? 
and you keep growing, you keep building, you keep adding a process. And these are processes that you have to drive as yourself, which you couldn't do if you're always editing or always on set. So how have I changed from the freelancer to the business owner is incrementally, but continuously and handing off work, which I shouldn't be doing. And that's kind of where I am today. I love that. I, th I think it'd be interesting for anyone watching or listening to understand timeframes. One of the things that I perceive is that most of us human beings are way over ambitious in how short a time we can achieve quite significant change. I think we underestimate, I think we overestimate what we can do in a year and underestimate what we can do in five. To someone who might be watching this, who's perhaps anxious about the idea of growth and scale, mm. Can you tell me about your timeline? I mean, how long has it taken you to go from business owner to having a team, a website, and a very clear niche? And mm. and and where do you feel you are on that journey? Mm. And where do you think you can, you could go next? I think I think it's a it's a great question because it what it does it opens up some truth about how long these things take. And if it hadn't been for you know the difficult trading over the last, I think I've, I think I've been in the VBA about a year now, and uh, during that time, I could probably say I've had four months of sensible trading. So eight, eight months, I hope I've got my math right here, eight months of support, development, you know, understanding and growth just without too much going on, and then four good months of trading. Um, yeah. And even within that, so that's, that's a 12-month, very difficult trading year, probably the hardest trading year I've ever had. I've still been able to go from freelancer to business owner, in that 12 month period. And I would say, I'm, I don't have a big business now. I don't have a big team. I have a very manageable team and a very agile and flexible team, but I have a team who I can rely upon to do the things I shouldn't be doing. So it's taken a year, I would say, to get to, I'd say chapter one is make the, make the, make the positive decision for growth and change, which was, probably the first six months. Chapter two was implement that in a way where you can see some results. And I'd say I'm just entering chapter three. I'm not saying this book has only three chapters. I think this book has like 20 chapters, 30 chapters. And I'm probably only on chapter three now where I have a modest business which has survived the most difficult trading and is ready to kind of grow exponentially in 2022. And, you know, you hear announcements like all, all pandemic, um, all COVID measures are going to be reduced and you just, a little firework goes off every time. It's like, here we go. This is the news we've been waiting for. And if I pick up, so for two years ago, if I pick up from where we were two years ago and it was like this, this guy, this creative director, me said, Chris, this is going to be our year. I think Easter is going to be the equivalent of two years ago for me and the business is going to see really strong growth in 2022. I'd love for you to talk a bit about some of the friendships that you've made in the group and some of the relationships you've built. Because I, I, I observe them from, from a ringside seat, mm. but I'm always fascinated and it's always wonderful to hear about people get together, they have a beer or they connect and they have a chat and they support each other. And there's a lot of that goes on. Can you talk a bit about that from, from, a, from your perspective inside the group? Because that's something that I don't necessarily see very much of because I'm obviously not there, but, but I know it happens and I'd love to hear how that's benefited you. Yeah. And I think that's one of, one of the things you get as a, as a freelancer, as an, as an individual person or sorry, an individual operator, your team kind of, you don't feel like you're necessarily part of a, a bigger team or a bigger group. And what I found within this is so there are people all over the UK, in fact, all over the world who are part of this group. So other than getting perspectives from people who operate in different sectors and in different um, countries, you do develop not just business relationships, but friendships. And uh, so Ben, you know, who you've, uh, you've had on the podcast, he's a great example. And uh, Andrew, so Ben operates out of uh, north of London, I can't quite remember where it's got, Back sorry, it's gone. 
Thank you. Yeah. So he, he operates up there and it's like a 20 minute train journey for me. Uh, Andrew, he operates out of uh, the Southwest a little bit. I can't, where's he? I can't remember where he's based either. Um, I think he's done from way. Broom, thank you. But he also has an office in London. And I've met both of these guys face to face. And what you realize is you chat over Zoom regularly and you develop those relationships and it's, it's, it's fun, it's always entertaining, it's always a, 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 always a laugh. But then you get together with these guys and you have those more in-depth conversations and you have a pint and you start to get to the crux of what's really happening and you, you build that friendship as well as a business relationship and you start supporting each other. You know, maybe we will collaborate on some work, maybe we will collaborate on a pitch and it's like we talked about just now, you, you change, you're not really clients and you know, your clients become your friends and your associates in the VBA also become your friends. And it's, it's good. You know, I've met people who have been very honest about the difficulties they've had, which makes me feel better because, you know, I wake up, wake up on a, a cold January morning and you look out and it's gray English weather and you think, oh, I'm, this is, this is a tough day. Then you speak to someone and go, yeah, I had a tough day this week, but that's fine because I understood that. I've shared that with someone. They've gone, yeah, but next week you're going to smash it. And it's like, do you know what? You're absolutely right. So having those, uh, those personal, honest conversations have equal value to the things we discuss in the big group. Um, I want to shift gears slightly because um, I think just before Christmas, you were introduced to someone in your niche who says something along the lines of, oh, I've had three different people today tell me I've got to speak to you. And, I, mm. and this really talks to, to niching and the importance of knowing your customer. Mm. Are, you, do you, are you happy to share a bit about that story? Because I think it's a really fantastic story. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, it was, um, I think it was, a, it was a Wednesday afternoon and, you know, a call comes in and it's like, listen, Chris, what are you doing tomorrow? Uh, I know it was a Thursday call. It was a Thursday. and like, what are you doing tomorrow? I went, well, what do you need? He goes, is there any chance you can direct a shoot for me? I've double booked myself. And it's like, absolutely, absolutely. He goes, fantastic, fantastic. And it was a shoot working on Andrew Lloyd Webber's Cinderella. So huge West End show, you know, Sir and Andrew Lloyd Webber, just like legend, legend of the theatre world. Um, it's like, wow, this is, this is great. So first of all, someone who's phoned me up to trust me to take over a shoot at the last minute from them, that was fantastic news. And then I get another phone call about half an hour later from uh, someone who works on the, in the, the, uh, the marketing department on that show going, Chris, is there any chance you can put a crew together for something we're doing tomorrow? It's like, I would love to, but I'm already directing something. He said, actually, they said, can you come in and shoot it for us? I said, well, I'd love to, but I'm directing another part of the, the shoot. And it was a a multimedia day, photography, green screen, social media content, you know, all sorts of stuff going on. I said, however, I can get a team together for you and they can be doing one thing, trusted team, while I'm directing the other. It's like, great. So straight away, the, my, name, my name had come up a couple of times in those conversations. But anyway, I then get to location and I get to meet the, the new director of sales and marketing for uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber Group, uh, uh, which was which was brilliant itself. And they said, someone is, you know, three different people recommended me to you, uh, you to me yesterday. And it's like, wow, well, that's fantastic. And it, it, niching is really important. And we were a bit, when we started, we were a bit generalist and we slowly moved into theatre, arts and culture after we'd had some very honest discussions. And I think the thing with you, Denny, is you look at a business, you know, dispassionately you will look at it and analyze it you'll go right you're doing 12 different things here you can't do you can't serve 12 different masters what who is your most important you know client or what is the thing that you think you can you know be, develop the most and all the way back when we had that conversation to here it was like you know what it is absolutely true niche is a, a value a, a huge business value that you have to you have to take seriously and get into. And the great thing is, you know, you develop that on LinkedIn as well. You know, you start following all the people who are doing things on LinkedIn, you see what they're up to, you get insight into the industry, they see what you're doing. Somebody might, uh, who you haven't spoken to for a while, will see that you've, you've created some content for the arts, culture and heritage sector or the sector that you're in. And they go, oh, I forgot about that. And 
once it's like we talked about the flywheel of the client, the client's flywheel is spinning. Same with niche. You spin that wheel up so you are known for something and you're known to be very good at it and then you're known to be great at it and then you're known to be expert in it. And once you get to that point, you've put all that effort in. The, the wheels are spinning and they are generating positive revenue or positive leads or positive feedback. Um, and yeah, it was great. I mean, I've, yeah, yeah we, have, we all have wobbles. And I think it's important to be honest. We have wobbles. Everyone has a bad day. And I was chatting to my wife in the lift the other day and, you know, January was quiet, traditionally quiet. All the data I've got over the years, January was quiet, but it was particularly quiet. And I said, I think I'm doing something wrong. She goes, no, 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 no. You know you're not doing something wrong. You had those recommendations. You do great work. People are always getting in touch with you. The theatre world is quiet in January. And that for me was great because it's exactly the sort of thing we talk about in the VBA. You know, it's like, look at the data, think about the situation you're in at the moment coming out of the post pandemic and be honest with yourself, you know, have a, have a, a bad day, but reflect on why you're feeling that and then prove to yourself that that isn't the case. And then you can move forward and you can, you know, you end up having another great conversation where someone says, oh, two people recommended me to you, oh, you to me. Oh, I'd recommend you to anyone then, but you know what I mean? It's like suddenly you're, you're, in a, you're in a better place again, you know, both up here and in the business. And when those two things tie together, it's really powerful. It's really powerful. What are you most excited about for the rest of the year? Well, uh, I'm really excited that the, the theatre world is going to be operating under less constraint because that for me is, you know, it feels like, it feels like at the moment the bridle is on the industry. You know, we're still, we're still moving forward slowly, but there's a little hesitancy still in the industry. And I think any minute now, the bridle is going to come off. We're going to be riding that horse down the beach through the surf at hundred miles an hour. Um, People will start coming back to the UK on holiday, which means the shows will be extremely busy. People will have confidence in uh, the arts cult and culture and theatre sectors again, which will be good. But also beyond the sector and reflecting on the business, it's like, OK, we're going into chapter three now, which is where I've got a clear understanding of what I need to do to be successful. I've got a very clear set of goals month by month. To, to try and hit targets to hit, which will show the business is growing. Uh, making films again, getting out there, filming with you know, some of the, the leading lights in the West End and in the world and seeing the business grow and knowing that that is because of the changes I made a year ago or 18 months ago. And you talk about the, the length of time it takes to achieve these things. Yeah, you know, you can only do so much, so much in a day or a year. But when you start to plan over, right, my target for a year, my target for five years, you start to see those things happen. Finally, what have you learned about resilience in the last year? Because you've had not just the pandemic, you've had some personal challenges as well, which I think we'd knock anyone for six. But what did the lessons come from resilience? I, I think the, the key things to remember are that bad things will happen. And it can be a small bad thing or it can be a big bad thing. And, you know, we got, we got a couple of kicks in the teeth this year, which, you know, were, could have destroyed the business, you know, certainly had a huge impact on the family. Um, but it's that it's maintaining that positivity without naivety. So it's like, OK, something bad has happened. It's we're going to have to just adjust how we do things, but we will get through it. And it is small steps, small steps. So, you know, uh, we talk about the Jim Collins book, you know, great, uh, great by choice. Is it great by choice? Yeah, great by choice. Terrific and, book. and Yeah, and it's a, it's a brilliant book. And it talks about not trying to achieve everything immediately. You have to take small steps, small steps. And I think in the hardest of times, it's, it's important to only take small steps because even if you're going you're taking a half step forward towards your business goals. That's still more than not trying at all. And we have so much energy, we have so much time. And last, you know, certainly last year, not just with the pandemic, but with the stuff that happened in the business, I had to de dedicate a lot of time to family, to sorting out, uh, to give everyone some context. We got flooded, we got flooded. Our flat was flooded, we had three feet of uh, sewage water running through it. We're in a basement flat, 
everything, you know, basically everything below three feet destroyed. Huge problem with the insurance, which wasn't our fault. It was, you know, some insurance error along the way. And it's a year. It's been, it's, well, no, sorry, it's not been a year, but it happened back in July. We're now in February and they've only just started the renovations. So we had to move. We sofa surfed for like three months while we, we tried to find somewhere to live. All of that while trying to run a business. And you just have to go, okay, I'm going to spend an one hour, one hour working on the business today because that's all I can afford to do. But that's an hour that you could have easily just not done because you're trying to find somewhere for your kids to live. You're trying to find what's been, you know, what do we have left? You know, it's the, luckily all the kit was me, with me on a shoot, small mercies. But it's really important that regardless of the challenge, you manage your time to deal with the important thing, in which case was the family, but you will find a small piece of time that you can still dedicate to your business and that will keep it ticking over. And then as things improve, you increase the amount of time you dedicate to it. But without doubt, you can keep taking steps forward, even in the hardest of times, as long as you've got people there to support you. And, you know, it could it could be your friends and it could be your family. But in a business context, if you don't have a bit, you know, if you're not part of a, a bigger business, you need that support. And, you know, for me, the VBA was there whenever there was an issue, whenever there was a problem. And it wasn't just work. You know, it's like, crikey, Chris, that's pretty brutal what's happened to you. What can we do to help? You know, and that was that was great. And sometimes people were they were giving me presentation templates, which they'd spent hours and hours working on going, this is my gift to you. I know you're going through a hard time. You need this right now. And suddenly, you know, things were less difficult, difficult. And, you know, the light at the tunnel, it came closer and it came closer. And, you know, you pop out and you're smiling and, and your business is still there and work is growing and you go, all right, that was a really tough time, but we got through it and that bodes well for the future. Chris, thank you for sharing. It's been a pleasure to hear your story in more depth. And I'm certain that those watching and listening to this will, will find it really useful. Thank you so very much. Absolute pleasure, Dan. Thank you for having me on. And I wish you all the luck for 2022.